Bob and I like to make stuff. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I get kind of hungry and I need a snack. So I built a piece of furniture with a secret compartment so I can eat snacks without waking anybody up. Many years ago on this channel, I made myself a bedside table. It was wood and metal, it was really simple, worked out great, but for the past couple of years, I've wanted to replace it and make something new. Now, if I'm gonna replace an existing piece of furniture in my house that I made, it has to be better. And so I've got a couple of kind of requirements to make it worthwhile for me to replace. The first thing is gotta look better. Aesthetically, it's just got to be different and hopefully using some new skills that I've acquired since way back when I built that other one. Now on top of that, I also have a bunch of books that I really like to have next to the bed, things that I can read for a little bit every night, and I need a place to stack those up so that they look nice. So it's gotta have storage for books. Both of those things are kind of self-imposed requirements. They're things that I want to fit into it, but this is also an opportunity. Making a new piece of furniture means that we can build it however we want and add cool stuff. So we're gonna add a secret compartment to this. I don't know what's gonna go in that secret compartment yet, but if I build it, I'll find something to put in there. So as I always do, I took my ideas into Fusion. Now, the problem is that I started with the idea about the secret compartment. So I figured out exactly how the mechanism was gonna work. I drew that up in Fusion, and then I tried to design a piece of furniture around it, and it looked terrible. Not just like my typical not a great designer look, like it looked legitimately bad. And I actually wrestled with it for a couple of days before realizing that I needed to take time to rethink the original idea. So I started at the very beginning, came up with a slightly different, but honestly better way to do the hidden compartment, and then designed with that in mind instead of around it. So now I've got what looks like a pretty normal piece of furniture, nice enough that it would be in somebody's home, but it is gonna have a secret compartment and it's actually gonna be pretty easy to build. But the first thing is milling lumber. If you're watching this video to learn how to secure your stuff in a piece of furniture, you also need to secure your digital valuables. And a great way to do that is with today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Now the cool thing about using a VPN is that it encrypts all of your information from your device and keeps it safe on its way to its destination. Nobody can steal it on the way and that's really, really good, whether you're at home or if you're traveling. Now, if you spend a lot of time in airports or in coffee shops, you wanna make sure that you are on a VPN so that all of your information is protected. And if you're traveling abroad, you also wanna be able to act like you're at home, which means you wanna get your version of Netflix or maybe another country's version of Netflix. You can do that by changing the location of your device in Surfshark. So besides securing your data and letting you that location, they also will monitor your online privacy. They'll keep track of your online identity and let you know if there are any data breaches, but the really cool thing is they don't track your search history or any of the locations that you go to on the internet. Securing your information is super important and Surfshark VPN makes it super easy to do. You can sign up and if you use our code MAKESTUFF at checkout, you're gonna get an extra three months for free. The link for that is gonna be down in the description. Do yourself a favor, get Surfshark, secure your data, and big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Luckily, I've got a whole bunch of rough saw and cherry, so unfortunately I have to mill that down, but I can get exactly the pieces I need. For the plywood, I have this much. These are all offcuts of a single sheet of cherry plywood that I got a really long time ago, and this is all I have left. So I'm gonna do some math and try to figure out how to cut these pieces into the right size strips so I can make as much of this thing as possible with what I've got. Once I get all these pieces of plywood cut down to their right sizes, I'm gonna have to join some of those pieces together to make panels for the shelves. To join those back together, I'm gonna use a biscuit joiner. This has a rotary blade and it slides out like that to cut a little slot in the edge of two pieces of wood. Then you use a biscuit and glue and you put this into the slots on both pieces, keeping those pieces aligned so it's pretty easy to make a panel. These are not necessarily for strength. For that, you would use like a Festool Domino or a dowel. This is mostly for alignment, and in this case, it doesn't really need much strength anyway, so this will work.
We got my legs milled down and they are cut to length, but I wanna add a little detail, something I've never really tried before. I wanna put a small taper on all four sides of the end of each one of these legs. The bottom shelf is gonna sit right above that taper. So it really only needs to be about three and a half, four inches tall. And to get that taper on here, I'm gonna use a tapering jig. I used it a few weeks ago in some project. And it's funny because I've had this jig for years and I've only used it maybe three or four times. I gotta admit, that felt super sketchy. I felt like both of my hands were really close to the blade, and I'm not sure of a different way to do it to get my hands further from the blade, so if you do anything like that, just be really careful. So now I've got my mill down panel. It's about an inch thick and this is gonna be the top. So I've still gotta cut that down to shape and then add some beveling and all that stuff. But I haven't actually shown you yet how the secret compartment's gonna work. And I'm actually not gonna show you that yet because it won't make a lot of sense. It will make more sense once we've got the base to build that top on top of. So next thing we're gonna do is take these legs, cut some slots in them with dado blades, fit the shelves in and start to build from the bottom up. And then once we get a structure there, I'll explain how the top's gonna work. Finally figured out what I'm gonna put in my secret vault. And not because it's secret or valuable or anything. They're just important to me. It's my little knife collection. I've got a few knives that I've kept over the years for my entire life, things that are important to me for different reasons. And I just kinda of wanna have them all in one place. This knife in particular was given to me by my parents when I was fourth or fifth grade, going off to summer camp for the first time. And the reason that was really cool is because it was the first time I was entrusted with a tool to use on my own to help myself or other people without my parents around. This was a big step. The fact that they trusted me to have this and use it correctly was pretty awesome. Over the years, I've upgraded from this one to this one that had a corkscrew on it, which was super useful. I've used a bunch of different types of blades and multi-tools and they all mean different things. But I think it's really important that everybody has a knife on them, has a blade on them, not as a weapon, not even as self-defense, but as a tool. We can be incredibly useful to the people around us if we are capable. One of the ways that you can be capable is by having a couple of screwdrivers and a blade on you just to help out if help is needed. If you don't carry a blade of some sort, I would recommend finding something that works for you, something that fits in your pockets, fits your personality, fits the things that you're into, and find a blade that you can carry with you all the time. And if you've got kids, buy them a knife and teach them how to use it safely, when to use it and when not to use it, and then trust them with it. Because honestly, that made a huge difference in my life when my parents trusted me enough to give me one of these. The legs and the shelves are pretty much done. They just need some sanding, some finish, but now we can move on to finishing up the top and talking about the secret vault. You'll notice that it's missing one of the sides and that's kind of the secret. Here's the plan with the top. This end is missing and that's because this end and the top are gonna to be connected together and they're actually gonna both slide on and off the top of the table. Now the reason this end piece is going with it is so there's not a little exposed slot on the end for the thing to come in and out of. This will cover it up. And that slot is gonna be on the inside, and that's because we need to add a little strip of aluminum along here so that it acts as a guide. Now the top is gonna to be two pieces sandwiched together that fit around this piece of aluminum so that it can slide just like a drawer slide. This way, you can leave everything that's on top of your bedside table there, slide the entire thing over to get to the vault, and then you can slide it back. So let's get that working, and then I'll show you how we're gonna lock it.
The rails are on and they're actually working out perfectly. They're very smooth to the top. And so now I have the piece that's gonna go underneath it. Now I'm gonna use a piece of MDF for this because it's half inch and all the half inch plywood that I have has bows and everything. This needs to be flat so that it doesn't bind as you're trying to take it in and out. So I've got this piece, I need to cut a rabbit on both sides so that it will fit underneath these rails. Then I'll need the top of this MDF to be flush with the top of everything else so it can attach to the actual top and become a slide. So back to the router one more time. So I've got everything to make the top slide on and off, and that's cool, but I want to be able to lock it. And I found a really, I mean, relatively inexpensive way to do that that doesn't require any programming or anything like that. This is a very cheap battery-powered RFID lock. Now, the cool thing about this is that it will unlock itself if the batteries die, so you don't have to worry about that. But it comes with RFID cards. So you just wave it over the sensor, and then it will unlock itself. But I don't really want a big card like this. And I found out that there's an app that comes with this, which will allow you to add other RFID chips. And on Amazon, I bought these really inexpensive RFID stickers. They're much smaller and you can make them work exactly the same so you can hide them on other stuff. The way we're gonna put this in is very simple. We just have to have a hole for the striker. So we're gonna put that in the base here, I think, and then make it so that that striker will go down into it when it's locked. And then this part will be attached to the wall that's gonna move in and out. Now you can attach it a couple of different ways. It's got holes in it for screws, but it also comes with big sticky pads, so you could just stick it to something. So I'm gonna get this hole drilled, get this thing mounted, and then we should be able to come up with a clever way to unlock it. Okay, so it's locked. Now let's try and see if we can unlock it. Awesome. That's cool. But anyway, I'm gonna take one of these and stick it on something that's gonna act as my key, get some finish on this thing, and we can try it out. This thing was actually pretty easy to build and I'm really happy with how it looks and how it functions. Now I've got all my knives and anything else I wanna keep in here that I can hide away and then get to them when I need to. We're gonna have links to some plans for this if you wanna make one for yourself and a link for the lock that I use and all the other stuff. So be sure to check that out down in the description. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for bloopers. Gives me an opportunity to make something into a also an opportunity and into the oh to mill them down to the correct shape and and when you put them over the sensor, nothing happens.